Today, let's test 15 Windows games on Apple M1. On screen, you can see the specs of our three machines. Please note, we are only testing Windows games under Crossover 20 and Parallels 16. At the time of this video's upload, Boot Camp is not supported on Apple M1. The Witcher 3 is one of the most requested games to come natively to Mac. The Witcher 1 and 2 were ported to Mac back in the day, but the third entry never saw a Mac version. Well, don't be too upset as the game runs fairly well on Apple M1 via Crossover 20. If you haven't watched my previous videos, Crossover allows you to run many Windows games on your Mac without a Windows emulator. We're playing at 1080p, resolution, and medium settings. Like every other game on this list, we've been unable to track the FPS with Steam FPS Counter or Fraps. However, for this game, we locked the FPS to 30 in settings, as doing this allowed for the most consistent frame rate, avoiding any major lag spikes. Thank you to Andrew Sai on YouTube for sharing some of his Apple M1 MacBook Air footage. Check out his channel for many more videos about Windows games tested on Apple M1 and how to set up Crossover and Parallels on M1. His channel link is in the description. Here we have a modern AAA title running on Apple M1. A MacBook Air is running the game at 1080p low graphics preset and the frame rate is anywhere from 20 to 40 fps. There was some stuttering in areas with complex geometry, however, it was minor. Yes, this performance isn't amazing, but let's not forget, this isn't a native port and is running on a fanless laptop. What I'm excited about though is that Metro Exodus might be coming to Mac natively in the future, as there is a macOS Depot spotted on Steam DB. This makes sense as Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light have native Mac ports already. Parallels 16 includes a lot of cool new features, including OpenGL and DirectX 11 improvements to play more high-end games. So, how is Halo CE doing? Well, you can toggle between the remastered graphics in the Anniversary Edition and the graphics from the original Halo Combat Evolved campaign. For the remastered graphics, the frame rate can struggle in challenging scenarios, while on original graphics it's most likely staying at 60 FPS. No visual bugs were encountered too, which is fantastic. Please note, to launch the game, you must have Anti-Cheat disabled. Fun fact, the original Halo CE was ported to PowerPC Max and is one of my most played games. I also played the Halo 1 demo on Mac back in the day, all the time. I think I finished this demo campaign, I'm not even joking, around 100 times as a young kid. So, you beat the Halo demo. Not bad, soldier, not bad at all. But are you ready to take the next step? in the full version of Halo. Despite the fact that I have no idea how to play this horror game, Phasmophobia, one thing I do know though is that it's working on Parallel 16, 1080p, high quality preset and 60 FPS on average. Don't get excited yet though, as it's a stuttery mess when you first start the game. It takes a minute or so, and then it stables out and is perfectly playable. It is an early access game running under a preview version of Windows 10 and a technical preview of Parallel 16, so I'm not that disappointed really. Sadly, I could not get the game to launch on Crossover 20. Despite Hitman 2's gorgeous graphics, it isn't really a demanding game, similar to the first game, I suppose. It's very well optimized for low-end hardware. On a MacBook Air and Mac Mini, we can run the game at 1080p and medium settings, and it runs pretty well. 
Only caveat is that there are some graphical issues from time to time. Feral Interactive ported 2016 Hitman to Mac and it's a terrific port, I showed it in a previous video. I was surprised that they didn't work on Hitman 2 for Mac. Here's hoping Feral are looking into it or maybe the upcoming Hitman 3. Anyway, if you're interested, you can play the first mission of Hitman 2 for free on Steam. I love Age of Empires 2. I still to this day play it on my old iMac G4 and iMac G5 in LAN battles with my brother. It's classic. If you were a power PC Mac gamer, you would know that Age of Empires 2 and the first and third game in the series were supported on power PC machines. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition unfortunately never saw a modern macOS version, so crossover is the way to go on Apple M1. It runs incredibly well, which shouldn't really be a surprise, it's not that demanding even with support for improved graphics. At 1080p high, we're seeing 60 FPS on average. Thankfully, this game has an in-game FPS counter that you can enable by pressing F11 twice. Getting this game to run requires a fix, however, so I've left a tutorial in the description if you want to play the game yourself. I tested World War Z under Parallel 16. Honestly, the performance was pretty terrible. We set the FPS to target 30 and put the resolution down to 720p and the graphics preset was on medium. Sometimes the frame rate was, you know, fairly consistent, then randomly it would become borderline unplayable. It also took ages to actually load anything in this game, I don't know why. I assigned 8 processors and 4 gigabytes of memory originally, and then I tried assigning the whole 8 gigabytes. However, this resulted in a buggy mess. According to Parallels, allocating too much RAM can run the risk of starving your Mac of RAM, which could cause your entire Mac to run slower. I imagine performance would be better on machines with 16 gigabytes of memory, because then you could, you know, allocate more than just 4 gigabytes. I'll give the game some slack, mind you. It's impressive that it's running here, because it's, you know, it's running under layers of emulation. This game can be buggy on Windows PCs, so how does it fare on Apple M1? Well, it's just okay. You see, the game plays at 1080p, medium settings, and gets anywhere from 30 to 60 FPS. Keep in mind, you can't launch the game from Steam. You have to do a small fix in the root folder. I've linked a guide in the description if you are interested in playing the game. The original Mafia 2 had a Mac version and was very well optimized, but was cancelled due to being 32-bit and not supported on modern macOS operating systems, which don't support 32-bit applications. To get Resident Evil 3 working on crossover, you have to have a save that is beyond the opening cinematic. Otherwise, if you start a new game, it will crash completely. We're playing at 1080p and a balanced preset. The game looks to get around 60 FPS on average when inside, and it can drop down to about 30 when venturing outside. This is not terrible performance, and I was kind of surprised that it actually worked here. The only obvious caveat is the graphical issues. Textures pop in and out as you move around, and it can be, you know, quite amusing actually. I think this is because the game can't detect the graphics card because this one is using unified memory, so it kind of freaks out and displays all these bugs. GTA 5 is probably the most requested game to see on Apple M1. Thankfully, it kind of works under Parallel 16. Mind you, it's probably on par with the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. At 720p, medium settings, it's a stuttery mess for the first few minutes and then stables out at 30fps. The game is not working on Crossover 20 right now as we can't get the Rockstar launcher to work correctly. 
so Parallels is the way to go. Fun fact, Rockstar used to be big Mac supporters, porting most classic GTA games to Mac and the Max Payne series. After GTA 5 launched, they kind of left us out of the picture. So please come back guys, come back. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is the highly acclaimed action RPG from 2019. I honestly did not think it would be playable on Apple M1. Yes, it's running at 720p and the graphic settings have been turned down to their lowest quality, but the frame rate is fairly consistent and there are no visual artifacts or anything. I would say it's like playing one of those high-end switch ports that had to make sacrifices to get it to run on low-end hardware. However, imagine if this game was ported natively, as the hardware here is significantly more powerful than that of the Nintendo Switch. Warframe is a free action game. Sadly, it would not launch under Crossover 20. I could only get it to successfully launch on Parallels. I ran the game at 900p, medium settings, and it looks to be getting 60 FPS on average, with some stuttering during combat. It's worth sharing though, that the performance was really bad for around 5 minutes, then it stables out. This is the case with many high-end games on parallels, like GTA 5, so I don't know what causes this. It also has pretty awful visual bugs or artifacts, Man, this scene in Battlefield 3 is epic. What a classic, and it's just really cool seeing it on a Mac. I was able to run Battlefield 3 via Parallels. It was a pretty graphic intensive game in its prime with all the massive explosions and gunfights. And unfortunately for this machine, it is kind of demanding for it. We have to play it at 1600 by 900, 900p and medium settings. The game lets you show the FPS via the console. Hit the tilde key and type render.drawfps1, then hit enter. As you can see here, it goes anywhere from 20 to 40 FPS in this specific scene that I tested. Still, I had a blast playing despite the lower frame rate. Fun fact, Battlefield used to be a thing on Mac, Battlefield 2, Battlefield 2142 and Battlefield 1942 had native Mac ports, which was so awesome. Hopefully EA sees the capabilities of Apple Silicon and consider us again in the future. What you're looking at here is the free demo for Project Cars 2. So while the demo is working for us, we can't promise the full version works as we didn't actually buy it. Still, this demo is a good representation of the full game. Jump into three scenarios, two track variations, and three cars. For the best performance at 1080p, we had to play at a mix of medium and low settings. With all settings set to medium, the game would have graphic issues. It doesn't look super good, but it performed very well. Skyrim is available on practically every modern gaming platform, except Mac. I'm not sure why no one ported it to our platform. Perhaps it was too expensive to license it for our platform. Anyway, we got Skyrim Special Edition up and running under Crossover. Back on the 10th of November, Crossover updated the software to version 20.0.1 which contained a fix for graphical issues in Skyrim. However, as you can see, these issues still remain. Other than the terrible flickering graphic issues which are happening all over the place, the performance is actually pretty good. The performance is no surprise, considering this game was originally a 7th gen console game and it was ported to Nintendo Switch, which in my opinion is a low-end device. This is all the games I have time to test today. If you want to see if a specific Windows game is working on Apple M1, I highly suggest that you check out AppleSiliconGames.com. 
Here you can search for a game and see if it's natively supported via ARM or Rosetta 2, or if it's playable via Crossover 20 or Parallels 16. The link to this website is in the description. What do you think of the results? Impressed or disappointed? Let me know in the comments. Considering that none of these games are running natively, it's still promising stuff. What you get here is better performance than if you were running these games on bootcamp on previous gen low-end Macs, if that makes sense. All that said, this video is just a public service announcement. Do I suggest that you try running Windows games on your Apple M1 machine? Honestly, probably not at the moment. Most games don't work, so you'd be wasting your money or require a lot of tinkering to get working. Unless you don't mind the tinkering or unless you have bought the games, just play native Mac games for now. If Bootcamp is ever supported, that will be the way to go. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple M1 Gaming. My name's Stewie and thanks for watching.